Welcome to the Unapologetic Man Podcast. The only podcast that's all about self-improvement, confidence, success, women, and being a man without making any apologies for it. What is up, gentlemen? Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the UMP. I hope you had a great weekend. I know I certainly did. And in this one, we are going to talk about why not to sell yourself to women but instead believe yourself to women, as I call it, and I'm going to explain exactly what that is, why it's so unbelievably effective to make women even more attracted to you, and what to do when women are trying to get you to sell yourself to them and what to do instead. And I got lots of great information in this one. Gentlemen, I'd very much appreciate a review. If you find value in my content, and certainly you should listen to this first before you make your decision, I'd very much appreciate a review, preferably a five-star review. The reviews have slowed down a little bit, although I have gotten a few awesome ones on iTunes. If you've posted recently, I really do appreciate you. And what you can do is you can write in coachmarksing at gmail.com and I will send you three awesome programs, three videos, and I will get your name tattooed on my butt, which by the way, is one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. Ancient world, you ask? Yes, it's beauty is timeless. So gentlemen, before we jump into the content, I want to ask you guys to do me a favor. I know, I know, I just asked for a review, which is a favor, but I want to ask you for another favor. Please be very careful about what you think. Okay, now why is this a favor for me? Because I believe that we are all part of a collective consciousness. And if you spend your time thinking about how negative things are, how the world is going to hell in a handbasket, how things are getting worse and the old generation was the better generation and how the world is just going to shit, you are perpetuating that. You are helping to create it. I really believe that. And if you don't believe in the law of attraction, which basically dictates that which you think you attract to yourself and collectively, when we think things as a collective consciousness, we create it even faster. Even if you don't believe that, you can at least agree that when you focus on the negative, when you say that the world is going to hell in a handbasket, you are helping to create it subconsciously because you're going to act out that which you believe. You do not understand what a powerful creator you are. In my opinion, you are part of God and you create your own life via thoughts. But again, even if you don't believe that shit, you have to admit that even in your day-to-day life, you are creating just by your actions. If you're focusing on negative things, if you're saying the world is going to shit, if you're saying that this country is going to disintegrate, the dollar's going to collapse, fucking everything is going to go to absolute crap, that's what's going to happen because your actions are going to perpetuate that. I urge you guys to focus on all the good stuff that is happening. Yes, there's a lot of bad stuff happening, but the world is also getting better. It's actually kind of getting better and kind of getting worse at the same time. But I believe that if we all go into an abundance, love-based mentality, we can change that by our collective consciousness. I was watching a video the other night about this new technology they have with drones, where in Rwanda, they can actually get a doctor blood, whether it's O, A, B, whatever it is, within 15 minutes. They get the order in at this drone facility. They package it up on the drones. The drone takes off with a catapult. It flies to whatever corner of the country it has to, and then it drops off the blood via parachute, and they were showing all these lives that have been saved. And I want to tell you, in Rwanda, there was a massive genocide not even a few decades ago, and those people are the most positive, most inspiring, most forward-looking people you could ever hope to meet. They're one of the happiest countries because they focus on abundance, because they focus on the fact that, yeah, it's been bad, but it can get better. And who can make it better? We can make it better. And brother, you are a part of that. So monitor your thoughts, monitor those things that you're watching on Facebook and Instagram, all the haters out there, all the negativity saying again that the world is going to shit. It's not, but it will go to shit if people continue to focus on it going to shit. Instead, focus on what's getting better, focus on the technology. And for God's sakes, this new generation, it's going to be better than us. I'm Generation X. I was born in the 70s and I look at my daughter and her classmates. I'm like, you guys are destined to be better than us. Generations continue to get better. The old generations are not better because they, I don't know, fought in World War II and oh, they had old morals and they stuck to what they said. Bullshit. Bullshit. 
Yeah, they were good people, but each generation is getting better. You are better than your parents. Your parents are better than your grandparents and your children are going to be better than you. So leave them a positive world by thinking of abundance, by thinking in love, by thinking in a towards mentality. Let's go to a better future together. Because when you perpetuate the negativity that is so abundant on all these social media channels, you are only speeding up the process because you are contributing to that collective consciousness that is creating the world that you fear. In my opinion, it's the collective consciousness that created COVID. Where is it now? We decided we don't like this shit. We could get over the shit. We could beat the shit. Watch us. And then we fucking beat it. Collectively, we are creating those calamities that we suffer from. So when you focus on the positive, you are helping the world rather than when focusing on the negative, taking away from it. My belief anyway, if you agree with me, fine. If you don't, that's fine too. But if you agree with what I'm saying, please focus on the positive. Focus on what can go right rather than what can go wrong. And that is strongly what I suggest you do, not only to create a better society, but also to get girls, to get money, to get happiness. Focus on that which you want. Don't even look at, don't even acknowledge, don't even give it an inch of space in your brain, that which you don't want. That's one of the secrets of life. All right, gentlemen, so when it comes to women, as I talked about on Thursday, they're gonna fuck with you. And my episode on Thursday talks about how you are not to be fucked with. I actually recorded that yesterday. I was pretty proud of it. If you haven't heard it, I definitely suggest you check that out. But today, we are going to talk about what to do when girls specifically try to get you to sell yourself to them. So anytime a woman tries to get you to sell yourself to her, do you think you should do it? Okay, right now you're saying no, but let's be honest with each other, bro. Pretend I'm sitting there right next to you. Nobody else is listening. We're just chilling like a couple of friends and be honest with me. You've sold yourself to a girl before, haven't you? Be honest now, man. Be honest. All right. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. And listen, I have too. Because especially when we don't have a high self-esteem, especially when we feel like she's out of her league, we want to like brag to her and show her that we're really great and that if she were to settle for us and look at those words, settle, it would be a good decision because we are valuable. Thus, we try to sell ourselves to her. You see guys talk to women all the time and they try to work into the first few minutes of the conversation that they have a lot of money, they have a nice car, they have a big dick, they're lawyers or doctors or whatever it is that they're proud of. They try to work it in there. It's like the dude who walks into the nightclub wearing a Ferrari hat. Come on, bro. Why are you wearing that hat? Be honest with me now. It's because you're insecure. You don't think you're enough just as you. Just me right here, brother. I'm a fucking enough. And because I believe that, I get people listening to my podcast, I get tons of girls, I get tons of clients, because I fundamentally believe that I'm not enough. And that goes into this concept of believing yourself to women, never explaining and or selling yourself to women. Believing yourself to women means that when you speak to them, you don't sell yourself to them. And that shows on a subconscious level, it's called a subcommunication, that you believe in yourself so much I don't even need to sell myself to you. Furthermore, if you have something cool about yourself, like you own a Ferrari, you are a lawyer, you are a doctor, you are a multimillionaire, whatever it is about you that's really cool, when you let the truth reveal itself in its own time, it hits that much harder. So when talking to girls, I often suggest to you guys that you should try to get the girl to sell herself to you. But if she tries to do the same thing back to you, you should not do it. Okay, so for example, I always tell you guys to ask girls the qualifying question, what's cool about you beyond your looks and or what would your best friend say is the coolest thing about you? Now, if you ask a girl what's the coolest thing about you beyond your looks or what would your best friend say she loves most about you and she sells herself to you, she is getting more attracted to you via the law of cognitive dissonance. We value what we work for. So if I'm putting effort into trying to sell myself to you, I'm actually going to end up liking you more than I did before I sold myself to you. That's why they do qualifying in car dealerships. They say, hey, man, you know, you really want to get into this car, but we need to check your financials. We need to make sure that you qualify for this car. What that mostly is, is a sales technique. Okay, yeah, sometimes they have to check your credit, whatever. But most of the time, it's just a sales technique to get you to want the car more and to get you more invested into the purchase. That's why we do it to women. We want women to sell themselves to us. 
We want women to work for us. We want women to do things like cook us dinner, drive to our house, give us a massage, whatever we can get from them. And any women listening, you could flip this back on men and do the same thing. If we can get them to put that energy into us, they're going to get more attracted to us. Cognitive dissonance. Now, if you ask a woman, what would your best friend say is the coolest thing about you? And she answers it and she says it back to you. What do you do then? Now, obviously, if she just says it to you out of nowhere, like, what's great about you? Never sell yourself to women. If she asks you a question like, what's great about you? You say, oh, I'm such an awesome sleeper. I just get in the G spot and I can just sleep for hours, like 12 hours straight. It's amazing. I'm going for the sleeping championship of 2023. Or I'm such a good breather. Watch, I can do it right now. Did you see that? I just did it. I breathed. How impressed are you? You're basically communicating, look, I'm not going to sell myself to you. But if she sells herself to you, meaning you ask her a qualifying question, she answers it. Then she asks you the same question. Then you can go ahead and explain yourself to her. But this is how you do it. The first part of your answer is always a joke. You say, I'm an awesome blinker. I can blink a hundred times in a second. Watch my eyes. Did you see that? And meanwhile, you didn't blink at all. And she freaking laughs. And then you laugh and you say, no, real story. My best friend would probably say that I'm really loyal. I always do what I say I'm going to do. I don't flake on my commitments. If I give you my word, I'm going to do something. I fucking do it. Okay. That's the way I would answer that. But I would never, ever, ever explain myself to a woman before she explains herself to me. So if they ask you that question, you have to have something really funny lined up to deflect it. Okay, what kind of job do you have? Many times I tell girls a fake job. I just mess around trying to make myself look low value. I say, oh, I don't have a job. I'm actually homeless. These are the best clothes I absolutely have. I live in a cardboard box right outside the bar. No job whatsoever and no intention, by the way, to get a job because I am completely not ambitious. Now see what I did there, boys. She asked me to sell myself to her and I did the opposite, making myself look worse. I was watching the show the other night where it's a bunch of dudes trying to get a girl. It's one of those dating shows. The girl's standing there and the guy has to come up and he has to like talk to her about certain things. What would you do in that situation? I want to put it to you, the listener. What would you do there? Okay, I'll tell you what I would do. I would do the opposite of trying to sell myself. I'd be like, hey, this is guy number five. Just to let you know, you should definitely not pick me. Okay, first of all, I'm a horrible kisser. I do the helicopter tongue maneuver, the jackhammer tongue maneuver, and I lick your face like a dog because it's slobber all over the place. I'm super skinny, so if I ever took a shower, I have the risk of slipping down the drain because I'm so skinny. That's how my father died, actually. Going down on you, I understand I should probably tape sandpaper to my tongue. Is that correct, sandpaper? Yep, that's what I'm going to do. Horrible at sex. I have a millimeter, Peter, and my friends call me the two-pump chump. So I would go with guy number three over here. Do you see the quaff this guy has? It's like a flock of seagulls on his head. This guy right here is a champion. And guy number two works out a lot. You should see the biceps on this dude. Holy, I would definitely want to get rescued by this guy. When I go down that drain because I'm so skinny, I'm hoping he comes to rescue me. So Jessica, it was good to meet you. Won't be meeting you again. Because as you can tell from my voice, I'm extremely insecure, no confidence whatsoever. So definitely choose guy number three, the flock of seagulls. That's your guy. Okay. So when I do that, I'm not selling myself to her, but you guys see what's sub communicated. I'm believing myself to her because I believe so much in myself. I can make fun of myself. I believe so much in myself and I have so many options. I'm not trying to get her. I'm not chasing her. Meanwhile, I'm watching the show last night and these poor guys, man, they've never been trained. So I wasn't hating on them. But meanwhile, they're like, did it hurt? And she's like, did what hurt? Falling out of heaven because you're an angel. <laughs> it's like so bad. And this girl obviously didn't choose that kind of guy. Who would she have chosen? Me, the dude who's trying to tell her why she shouldn't date him, why he's not trying to sell himself to her. And furthermore, I'm being funny right? I'm cracking her up. I'm saying I do the helicopter tongue maneuver. I'm so skinny. I slip down the drain. My friends call me the two pump chomp. You should go with guy number three because he's got the flock of seagulls haircut. Now what I'm doing too is I'm kind of amogging guy number two and guy number three, aren't I? Guy number three has got the haircut and I'm kind of ripping on him. Guy number two is obviously obsessed with how he looks, which by the way, you see those dudes who are really fucking shredded in the gym. What does that sub communicate? Honestly, it subcommunicates insecurity. If you're going to the gym more than once a day, I think there's an issue there. 
it's good to be ripped. It's good to be shredded. But it's like when it's the extra, extra kind of shredded, like the dude's clearly on the gear. You can't see his neck. When he walks through a door, he has to turn sideways so he doesn't get stuck in the door with his shoulders. There's an issue there. And women know that. And that's why many women are turned off by dudes who are gym freaks is because it's try hard. You're trying to sell yourself to this chick via your body because you're fundamentally insecure. All right, so we understand that to believe yourself to a woman, you're actually gonna try to sell her on the fact not to date you. When she tries to get you to sell yourself to her, you're gonna do the opposite. You're not gonna brag about those things you do. You're not gonna try to convince her of anything and you don't fucking care what she thinks of you because you believe in yourself. Now, you can act this way, but your belief in yourself is essentially subcommunicated via your tonality, your body language, and your confidence. That's why when I talk to the chick behind the screen, like I'm guy number four and I'm talking to the chick behind the screen, I said, hey, as you can tell from my voice, I'm not confident. The reason I said that is because she's going to say, actually, your voice sounds like you are confident. Huh, he's funny. He's not trying to convince me. He's not try hard. I'm picking guy number four. Gentlemen, I guarantee to you, if I went on one of those shows and I did that, she'd pick me. And I'd probably end up having sex with her too because that's how effective it is. So believing in yourself means never trying to sell yourself to anybody. What is arrogance? Arrogance is trying to flex your worth to others and prove to them that you're enough so that they agree that you're enough so that you can agree that you're enough. You are relying on the outside opinions of others to tell you how you feel about yourself. And arrogance is just a really hardcore attempt to do that. What is confidence? Confidence is internal, internally motivated. I don't give a shit if you like me. I don't care if you believe that I'm good enough for you or not. And when you don't care, that's when you are good enough for these chicks. I have guys write me all the time. I'm a dating coach, right? And I have a three-month coaching program. I'll get dudes that write me and they're like, so Mark, you know, I'm thinking about hiring another dating coach, but I'm also looking at you. Can you please tell me why I should hire you over this other guy over here? No, I won't tell you. Kick rocks with your head down, you fucking sea bass. Beat it. Don't let the door hit you where the good Lord split you. I'm not going to try to sell myself to you. Now, if you guys listen to any other of my podcast episodes, you'll hear me talking about my coaching program. And you might say, well, wait, aren't you trying to sell yourself to me? Aren't you trying to say how awesome it is? There's a slight difference there. I believe in it so fucking much that I literally say on those episodes, I do not understand you guys who have not fucking joined. Are you insane? The math ain't mathin. I don't fucking get it. Why haven't you joined me? I'm literally confused. And that's the difference. It's not like, hey guys, you know, I'm a great coach and I've had all these successes. I'm like, bruh. I have 200 fucking reviews on my website. Every single guy that goes through my program gets success. Are you high right now? Not fucking joining us. Are you fucking crazy? That's the way it is. So when a girl rejects me, I literally think to myself, you are a fucking idiot. Your filter is broken. You obviously have trouble understanding what an attractive guy is. You are mentally broken if you cannot see my value. I definitely do not walk away going like, oh, I'm not good enough, bro. Like, she's way out of my league. No. I'm like, dude, you are the one with the problem. Guys will write me and be like, you know, Mark, um, I understand that NLP has some doubters out there and some people on the internet say it does not work. Could you go ahead and explain to me with scientific evidence-backed research that it does indeed work? No. I'm not going to explain it to you because it fucking works. I know it works. It's worked on me. It's worked on thousands of my clients. There's tons of evidence out there that says it does work. And by the way, dipshit, there's also evidence on the internet that says the world is flat. So take your doubts and take a long walk off a short pier because I don't have to sell myself to you. I have enough guys who want to work with me. I know my value and I don't have a shred of insecurity regarding my coaching program and regarding me as a guy for a girl where I have to sell myself to you. So no, I won't do it. Beat it. Long walk, short pier, and I hope you spray diarrhea later. That really hurts. The kind that just like really hurts. I hope you get that later. I'm kidding, of course, boys. I have absolutely no hatred for a guy who wants to work with me. In fact, I'm always really cool. And I'm like, hey, bro, no, I'm not going to explain myself to you. And furthermore, if you have doubts about it, you shouldn't come join us. Because it's those guys that are like, yo, I believe in this dude. I've seen his evidence. I'm ready to give him my trust. Those are the guys who get results. 
So no, I'm not going to explain myself to you because you're not a good fit right from the get-go. If you have to ask if it works, it won't work for you. And that's the same thing with females, boys. If you have to ask like, oh, is this guy good enough? No, I'm not. Beat it. If a girl ever tells you, hey, so I'm dating this other guy too, and I'm wondering like, do you think I should choose you or I should choose him? What do you think Uncle Mark Singh would do? You're damn right, motherfucker. I'd be like, choose him. The guy's a champion. Look at the size of his biceps. He's got to be ultra confident with those biceps. Hey, Kelly, it was a great couple laps with you. Really enjoyed it. Take care. Then what's going to happen, boys? You're damn right. Five days later, hey, it's Kelly. So what have you been up to? Be like, nothing. What's going on with you? Nothing. Whatever happened to Jeff? Oh, I blew him out so hard. His flock of seagulls haircut blew off his fucking head when the concussion hit. Because you show that you're not needy. You show that you're enough. You don't need her. You have options and you will never sell yourself to a woman. Instead, you will believe yourself to a woman by showing her that you are essentially internally validated. I'm enough because I say I'm enough. And that's my final point, boys. How do you know if you're enough for a high quality girl? For you guys who have been following me on Instagram, and if you haven't yet, I'd very much appreciate it. Just click the link in the description below. I'm dropping two videos a week as well as two carousels a week with really good information. I had one recently that said, how do I know if I'm good enough for a high quality woman? Is it because I make lots of money? I work really hard. I'm ambitious. I'm a great dude. I treat her like gold. I eat her snatch like I came out of the Amazon rainforest and I'm starving and I see a clam and I just go at it on the beach. Is it for all those reasons? No, you're good enough just because you are, because you decide you are and you say you are. And you, brother, can make that decision right now. I am fucking good enough because I say I am. And I'm not going to sell myself to women. I'm just going to believe myself to women, which means I don't need to do anything. I just need to be me. And when you believe it, you sub communicate it and she's going to believe it too. So why are you good enough? Just because you are. And listen, if that doesn't work for you, listening to podcasts and me telling you this a hundred times, then fucking join the three-month coaching program. Let me get into your head with NLP and I will remove those bullshit belief systems like, I'm not good enough. Um, girls would be better with another dude than me. I have a millimeter Peter. I'm a two-pump Trump. I went to the doctor and he said that I was a beast and I called him later and he really said that I was obese and uh, I just don't know what to do. Come into my fucking program. Let me reprogram your goddamn brain and do what I do to guys time and again. Turn you into a 10 magnet. It's time to either man up or punk down. You know, you're either going to come join us or you're not. And I really hope I get to meet you soon. And that is believing myself to you rather than selling myself to you. I don't need to sell you anything, bro. I know my shit works. I'm just giving you the opportunity to experience it yourself, as have thousands of other guys, all of whom got the success they were looking for with women. Gentlemen, I do appreciate you listening. Seriously, brother, you're enough, man. You're enough. Just decide it. Just tell it to yourself and continuously tell it to yourself. Going back to my initial point, don't let those negative thoughts come into your head, whether about yourself, about society, about the future. It's just creating more strife and struggle and negativity in this world, which we do not need. Are things getting better or are things getting worse? I personally believe both, but the part that's getting better is beautiful, man. There's some amazing things going out there. There's some amazing people being born, amazing minds coming out into this world. And I believe that our children are going to be better than us. So be the best fucking man you can be. Be unapologetic about who you are. Get the barrel to the ball, launch it in the left field, and run those fucking bases. That's what you're here to do. And if you've listened this far, I really do appreciate it. Once again, gentlemen, a few things. Leave me a review, preferably a five-star review. Email me at coachmarksing at gmail.com, and I will send you three programs, Conversation Sniper, Guide to the Female Orgasm, and three texts to build massive attraction in women. Follow me on Instagram. I'm dropping content all the time now on IG. And if you want to come join us in my three-month coaching program, go to my website, click on coaching, read through the 200-plus testimonials, Click on apply, fill in the quick application, send it in. You and I will email back and forth with each other and you will get on a free one-on-one, -on -one, one hour breakthrough NLP session with my boy, Victor Lynch, to see if we can 10X your results with women. Gentlemen, I really appreciate you listening. I'm dropping another awesome one on Thursday. So please stay tuned for that one. And I will see you in the next episode.